Ever loaded the family into your project only to realize it's showing up in every view? Or maybe it's not showing up at all. It might be caused by the family's category and visibility settings, and it's one you can easily fix. In the fourth video of Bim Depot's five-part beginner series on Revit family creation, we'll cover how to assign the correct family category, use subcategories for clean line work control, and set up visibility settings so your family displays exactly how and where you want them to. At Bim Depot, we follow strict visibility standards to make sure our families work across all view types without surprises. And you can too. Go to our website to learn more what we have to offer with both Revit families and templates. Let's get into it. So getting back into it, let's reuse the same exact family that we created in the first three parts of this series. If you haven't watched yet, go check them out. So at the beginning of this series, we chose a category right at the beginning. So let's say if we wanted to change that. So up here, this little folder icon, let's click it. You'll notice generic models. That's what we created it at the start. So you can, if you wanted to, change this to any sort of category that you wanted to, as long as Revit allows it kind of just based within the type of family that it is. The reason that's important, the category, it has a lot to do with how it's shown in the project space. So we touched on this in the previous video, but we looked at object styles. So if we're looking at this, our categories here, generic models, this is really a large part of the control here. So for example, our line weights, we can control that. Say we did a really thick line weight for this. You'll notice that since we modified the category, it's now adjusting the line weights of all the families within that category. So that's potentially one of the things that is going to be very important for when you start to upload these families into your project. Another reason that it's important to get the right type of category, if we go back to our schedule here, so if we click on the schedule that we created in the previous video, you know, this is really something that was created for generic models. So let's say if we had multiple families that we wanted to show in the same schedule, but there were different categories. So let's say we had five pieces of furniture. We made some as generic models, some as furniture, some as furniture systems. We're really just overcomplicating things when it comes time to schedule them. So if we do new schedule, you'll see that these are really based around the different types of categories that Revit has. And then another instance where it's really important to have the right category, if you started to tag your objects, this is really going to be the tag for a generic model. So generic model tag. So this is sort of a, a smaller issue, but let's say you didn't have that type of tag, you're not going to be able to actually tag it within the project space. So another way that this is potentially an issue in our visibility graphics overrides, VG on the keyboard. If we come down to generic model, let's go ahead and override the surface pattern here. So now that we have that override, all the generic models within this rubber category, generic models, all of them have now been overridden. And we can do that for our patterns, our transparencies, our lines, both for projection and for cut. And this really also applies for our visibility, right? So if we turn this off in generic models, click apply, you know, both the tag and the object, they're both gonna be hidden from this view now. So that can really be the cause for a lot of issues with visibility. So, you know, potentially you're hiding an entire category and let's say you built your Revit family in the wrong category. You're just going to make it more difficult for yourself and your team to control it once it's in the project space. And, you know, you don't always want to see certain objects in plan, section, elevation, and so on. So you just want to make sure you're doing that correctly. The category, it's also really the basis for your view filters. We have another video that kind of shows you how to use view filters, but you know, if we were to create a new one, you'll notice that again, our categories, this is really the starting point for so many things in Revit. So you just want to make sure that the Revit family category is correct. And then that's going to help with your graphics and your visibility kind of just throughout the use of this family. So a way to get even more control or more like refined control over things within your model here. So if we wanted to add the subcategory, we first need to go create it. So under object styles, Let's go ahead and create a, a new subcategory. We will call this cube, click OK. And for the default values, you can modify that here. And then this is kind of the default. If it's loaded into the project for the first time, this is what it's gonna have. Let's click OK, select our cube, and then subcategory, let's assign that subcategory with the geometry. And now let's go ahead and load that back into the project. Overwrite the existing. And if we come back to our object styles, scroll down to generic models, 
and let's go ahead and modify it the same way that we did previously. This time you'll notice that our line weight didn't change at all. So let's change this back. The reason that happened, if we do this little drop down plus arrow, you'll notice now that we have cube within our object styles. So it's really just creating that next level of control uh, for your family. And this is really helpful if you have, say, a lot of families that you want to show differently within the projects, or you know, even if you have a ton of different elements kind of nested within that family, you can start to give it those subcategories so you have baseline control here. So just to show you how this works, now we can see the line weight has changed similar to the way it did previously. If there's no subcategory assigned, it just takes this top level generic model. But if we have that subcategory, then it's going to be modified here. And just like most things in Revit, you can also modify that kind of within your visibility graphics overrides, your view templates, view filters, things like that. So coming back into our family, we've really just been dealing with 3D geometry objects. Let's say you wanted to add a finer level of detail that doesn't necessarily need to be in 3D, but it's more of like a, a 2D representation. So within our annotate tab, let's go ahead and click symbolic line. And then let's go ahead and create a, a rectangle within the rectangle. And then let's go ahead and change this to a different hidden line. If you want more options for these lines, all you need to do is create another subcategory. So go to Manage, Object Styles, and then create another subcategory, and then name it however you want within this. So that'll really give you the option to be able to control this. Let's go ahead and associate some dimensions with these lines. And you'll notice that I'm always snapping to directly to the reference plane and I'm not snapping to the geometry itself. So if you start snapping to other objects or geometries, line mark and not the reference planes, that's when you start to create issues that Revit might not like once it gets into the Revit project space. So let's go ahead and create a new parameter for this. So you'll notice you can select multiple dimensions at the same time and create a new parameter. Let's call this a dash offset. Okay. So now it just selected one of the dimensions and now all of them are kind of equal, same dimension. And then to modify that, to control it, let's change it in our type dialog box for both of the types that we've created. Click OK. Now you'll notice that it's three inches all the way around. So let's go ahead and load this into the project. So now you notice that there's no dash line on top here in the 3D view. But if we go to our 2D plan view, you'll notice that now we have this dash embedded within this. So you can start to snap to that the same way you would snap to a reference plane. But really, that's sort of a nice feature. So I'm trying to show that it's a hollow box or something. This is incredibly useful for so many different things like door swings or window awning swings or something like that. It's used all the time. So it's really if you don't want to add a bunch of weight to your model so that it's slowing down, these are really the things, the nice little tricks that you can do to add detail but not add that much processing power. So now let's say that we wanted to actually see this within that 3D view. So once we're here, we want to be able to see that dash line. Let's go back and then let's select all of our lines. And then you'll see, since we created this as a symbolic line, there's also a model line. So a model line is a, like an actual line within the 3D space. So if we go to modify, you'll see convert lines. And that's converted it now to a model line. So now you'll see that we can't see it on top, but if you click, you'll notice that the line is actually drawn on the original like origin plane. So we can actually modify that. Edit work plane. And then we can pick a plane. And let's go to our elevational view because we always want it to show on top. We'll go ahead and pick our, our height plane because we always know that's going to be the tallest that this object is. So now that we've picked that plane, you'll see that's actually kind of a 3D portion of the family now. If we load this in, now we can see it kind of within 3D space. So, you know, for, for certain things, if you had a decal or something that you wanted to see, you know, within your family, you can do that with, again, without creating too much weight to the family. Let's say if we wanted to modify how this actually looks. So right now, this is in the subcategory of hidden lines. And then notice your projection versus cut. So it's the same subcategory, but it's a different instance of what's happening to it. Whether something's shown in elevation or distance in plan, versus if it's actually being cut. So if we go back to our model here, so let's go back to object styles, generic models, and then hidden lines here. So we can actually change our line pattern. And again, if you haven't, you don't know how to use this stuff, we also have a video on line styles that explains how to do all this. Go ahead and change it to a dash 16th inch. 
the y. Now you'll notice that that dash is now a 16th instead of an eighth, so it's just kind of like a finer scale. So that's a little bit dangerous to do it like that. Our hidden line, that's a, a super broad category. So let's say if this is like a decal on a door or something, you actually might even just want to create within your family, create a new subcategory. And then that way you can control it without worrying about affecting other things. So say there's a hundred different generic model families within this project. You don't have to worry about affecting, you know, a hidden line and some other thing, which is going to mess up your visibility stuff. So let's go ahead and change it to one thirty second dot. And then you just have to make sure that you're changing the subcategory here or in the properties in the subcategory, go to decal. Let's go ahead and load that back into the project. So now you notice that it's being controlled in this way, and then we don't have to worry about the other generic model families that have the hidden line subcategory used. So another similar thing here, let's go ahead and hide some of the stuff here. So let's say I just want to see these reference planes. So quick way to do that. Again, we have another video on this, but let's go ahead and isolate this category. So say if we wanted to show like some sort of fill on this, we'll go back to annotate, and then let's go ahead and give it a filled region to this box. One cool thing too with assigning things to a reference plane, I didn't mention this in a previous first video, but you can just like snap on intersections, not have to check any of this. And then it's actually going to just change, you know, with that. So that's a really quick way of creating new geometry or filled regions, just associating it with reference planes. So again, for these lines, you can do a subcategory. And then now let's come out of this isolated view. So now we have this black fill. Maybe give it a different type of style. So now, again, this is just a filled region, so it's just an annotation object. You know, it's never going to show up in our 3D. It's really like, again, if we have some detail that we want to show, but we don't necessarily want it to be like a 3D element. This is also similar to like your materials. So your material has the ability to show hatches like this, but let's say if it's, again, just like a small little detail, you can do that. So now if we load this in, overwrite the existing version. So now you can see that we actually have that filled region shown here and it is a masking region. So we're actually not seeing that, but yeah, you can adjust so the view is set up correctly. If you wanted to show that line underneath, just edit your filled region, turn off masking. So now let's say, you know, in our 1 8th plans, we don't need to see, you know, this minute level of detail, but you know, in our larger, say like quarter inch or half inch plans, we actually want to start to see some of this stuff. So let's say our quarter inch plans, we really want to see this dash line. We can go to visibility graphics overrides, click edit. You'll notice here detail level, coarse, medium, and fine. You can uncheck coarse. So what this will do is really within the project space, okay load into project. So now you notice that our dash line is gone. And the reason for that, if we come down here, detail level, click on this, you'll notice that we're in course right now. So if we go to medium, you'll notice that line pops back up. And if we go to fine, it's still there because we still had it checked. So that's a way like, let's say for our eighth inch, we have course always shown, but then we size up to a quarter inch drawing. And then we want to show that, you know, next level of detail, we can do it with this. You can really do that with anything. So this filled region, we can take off both coarse and medium, and you can do it with the actual geometry too. So the, the 3D object, that has the same controls. So let's go ahead and load this back in. See our plan, so now that we're medium view, can't see the hatch, but we can see both the box and the dash line. And then in our fine view, we get to see everything. So if we click on that geometry again, and click on the same edit button. You may have noticed that there's another option, view specific display. So in here, display in three views and, and you get this checkbox. So essentially what this is, say we didn't want to see this in elevation, but we did want to see it in plan. Let's go ahead and load this back into the project. So now we can see the object in 3D, we can see it in plan, so we know it's there. But now if we go to an elevational view, we cannot see those objects. So this is a north and then an east elevation. And that's really because we turned off that visibility setting to not see it in elevation. So we can do front back. So say if you wanted to see the front elevation, but not the side, load this back in. So now if we go to our north elevation, we can now see all of these different Revit families that we have. But if we go to the east, they cannot be seen and then 3D in plan as well. So it's really a way to, you know, fine tune how you're actually seeing this. So you won't want to see something in elevations. You just want it to be a plan representation 
or you know potentially in this case wanted to see the front but you don't need to see the thin profile in your elevation so this whole dialog box is really kind of nice and a lot of times it's super beneficial to your project teams but it's not necessarily something that they have to go and tweak every time it's really just happening in the background and it's kind of doing a lot of the legwork for you. Revit family visibility control is what separates functional families from frustrating ones. And you will know from your project team, if you create something and it's frustrating, you will hear about it. With the right category, subcategory, and detail level settings, you get reliable graphics across every view and every project. Next up in BIM Depot's five-part beginner series on Revit family creation, how to test troubleshoot and QA your families before sharing them because a broken family can break your whole model. Do you or your firm want families that follow all these best practices out of the box? BIM Depot has you covered. Check out our website for all that we have to offer from Revit families to Revit templates. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and join us for the final episode in this series.